Welcome to the first video of this series, Understanding the Development of the Human Mind. What is human mind and where it is? Before that, we need to understand how mind has developed and evolved over a period of time. What mind actually is and how do we work around it? The only person that you're talking to from morning to evening is you yourself. There's a kind of a self-talk which is going on. And these self-talk or thoughts and beliefs that we are playing is coming from somewhere. But how we have evolved over a period of time, from the instinctual primitive man or instinctual primitive beings where we dwelled in the jungle with no rules, what we thought we executed without any filters of social or behavioral dynamics. So when we are saying that instinctual beings were those who thought and executed whatever they felt. For example, if we felt like eating, we killed an animal, whatever was crawling or whatever was available around, which tasted good or was even, uh, you know, for giving energy was good enough, we ate it. Over a period of time, as we came into understanding of, yes, survival is the most important key significant thing. Hunting became uh, a sport. We started hunting for survival. And where we understood that there were animals who were more stronger, would just simply attack and make us their meal rather than be hunting for them. So we started understanding the element of power and, uh, you know, format of community living. So whenever an animal that was more stronger than us, and if we could tame it with tools, we could fight. And if the animal was more stronger than us, we chose flight. Fight, flight became our primitive understanding where how we face situations in our oldest form of survival. However, as we grew, there we knew that there are certain animals or situations in which we neither can fight nor we can fly. So the play dead naturally became our third response, where we just simply held our breath. And an animal that does not move, distracting the predator to give an impression that yes, there is no life here. And that is how the moment the predator got distracted, the animal crawled away. We've been watching so many video clips also on uh, the social media these days, which are being uh, you know forwarded um, a mice or a. Uh, we've been watching these videos over a period of time where uh, you know a mouse or a duck that distracts the cat and simply crawls away when the moment they get distracted. However, the modern day equivalent to that play dead is depression. When in situation we neither can fight nor we can flight is where the play dead is in. We will talk about depression in a different video. However, at this stage, we want you to understand that play dead is where, why there are people who stay in this depressed mode for over a period of time. Few get over with it, few stay in that forever. And then they seek treatment. Because depression is one state in which the person is feeling neither there is fight nor there is flight that is helping them. So in depressed mode or play dead mode, they get all the maximum attention from the family. They get all what they want. If, uh, you know, parents or peers will not give them some kind of tension or worry or push or pressure. That's why the word says depress. Do not pressurize me. And in that mode, it's like a comfort zone where they, in the process, they recover. And, uh, you know, there is no pressure. We will get the rest. It's kind of a comfort zone that we would like to stay in so people who get depressed are not by choice, but by the instincts, they fall into this trap. How to revive that? We will actually come up with a different video in order to let you know what depression is and how do we treat depression in a way. So let's understand the fight flight first, where in situations it's a survival based instinctual mechanism, which is programmed within each one of us and understanding when the danger and crisis sense is the time when we see the threat, let's say a lion or a tiger or some predator which is approaching, you then get alarm. Autonomic nervous system that we have, in Hindi we call it Swayam Sanchalit Chetna Tantra, that kicks in. That triggers one of the two responses. If, of course, the challenge is tameable, which we can deal with, then the rage, aggression, irritation, frustration, or some kind of a, uh, you know, an instinctual process to rush the adrenaline within our responses, the gut is squeezed, the blood is rushed into the arms so that either we can fight with hands or start running away, which is flight through the legs. So the blood gets squeezed into it, your uh, you know, neocortex squeezes to send the blood back to the amygdala. 
and that is how the reactive part kicks in. You do not rationally wait to assess the situation of what is happening. The survival-based instincts simply kick in. So fight actually is a response in which we choose to face or attack the threat. However, flight is the response where panic sets in, fear sets in. We know that we can't handle the situation even at home when we see some of these uh, you know, processes where at uh, uh, within the environment there are people, in-laws, bosses or uh, social pressure that we go through where we are not able to fight it, but we have to flight it. So avoidance is the key. So we run away from that. We stay behind the closed doors or we do not face the situation. There is worry where there is, you know, fear of judgment of others. So these are the two responses. Either you fight or flight naturally. However, the third response, as we spoke about from the state of homeostasis and crisis, when it comes, the anxiety takes up through the anxiety curve of sympathetic nervous system that is taking us up the anxiety curve. The moment that threat is over, we reach a flashpoint. For example, if you're being chased by a dog and if you're running, obviously the fight flight is already triggered. The adrenaline is coming in the blood. Your breath is changing. Physiologically, there are things that are happening within your system, which you do not have to say it. It's a part of the autonomic, uh, you know, survival instincts that have already kicked in. Sympathetic curve is the curve where we go up the anxiety curve for threat of the survival. As soon as you are on this side of the gate and the dog or the threat is on the other side of it, now you, you feel safe. That safety point from where the sympathetic nervous system take its peak and now it will not go beyond it is the time what we call it flashpoint. At the flashpoint you ease because you feel safe. And from there the parasympathetic nervous system, which is the exact opposite of sympathetic, will take charge to bring your uh, you know entire metabolism, breath and the palpitations and the rush of blood and everything back to normal, which is the state of homeostasis where we started, where you were completely at ease with yourself. Now, this understanding for the fight flight, when the parasympathetic doesn't kick in, which means that if the threat and the situation that you're trying to change or uh, transform over a period of time, if it doesn't stop and the environment constantly keeps pushing you, let's say if the tiger kept chasing you and there was no resource or shelter or tree that you would climb up to, it will result into a situation where you'll run out of all your resources and a panic button from the subconscious unconscious space that will get triggered. Panic attack is all the outcome where the sympathetic nervous system just doesn't stop and the parasympathetic doesn't kick in. And as long as the threat continues, there is fainting, there is auto shutdown, there is, you know, feeling drained, nausea or, or giddiness, all of that, that when it starts setting in is the time when you hit the panic. The symptoms of the panic attack that we go through is blood pressure, heart rate, adrenaline rushes in. The sympathetic nervous system takes you up and up into all these symptoms. Pupil dilation happens for the maximum light to enter in so that you are alert and aware. Muscle tension builds in. As I already explained that the gut squeezes to push the blood into arms and legs so that you could either fight or flight. These are physiological changes naturally that are happening. So if any of these palpitations and you know, all these panic symptoms are happening. Do not really, uh, you know, worry. There is obviously uh, a remedy to this. Through therapies, you can actually change the entire neuropathway system of how the panic is perceived and how you respond to the situation that home. The moment you have a coping mechanism, as in the primitive man, they could climb up the tree or go into the cave and we built an entire security system or society around it for us to understand how this panic can be handled. Because then that community living helped us, made us aware of the resources and the strength as a society that we had. And this is how the formation of society had, uh, you know, happened, where uh, from the time when we uh, were living all alone, just as nomads to coming as tribes come, uh, coming together for a larger purpose, for security and developing of survival resources. In panic, uh, once the panic is over, the Overall, as we say, sympathetic nervous system results into a flashpoint. Then the parasympathetic kicks in naturally to bring your heart rate back. You relax. Uh, regular breathing happens. Pupil becomes normal. All these, uh, you know, calming gestures that will begin happening. From there, when we go into these are the panic symptoms. So breathing problems, heart rate, chest pain, trembling. In hypertension, even in your life, wherever you are, if any of these symptoms are bothering you, do not really worry. There is a complete systematic process of therapies over a period of uh, 21 days, which is about three to five sessions to over a period of three months to nine months or six months. We can give you an entire reprogram 
or reprogramming of your sympathetic parasympathetic as a new uh, you know therapeutic response that can be achieved through hypnosis that is why these videos are created for you to get aware that why these videos or why the panic can uh, can help you revive from the situation so whatever that is autonomic which is coming as a part of your survival instincts can be with a coping or a certain calming mechanism reprogram over a period of 21 days to 3 months or 6 months your behavioral patterns can change over 41 days and your attitude or even dna reversal of a certain disease non invasively drugless format just with your breath work and awareness can be reversed we've been working at atharman holistic studio with so many such uh, you know ailments purely and purely through certain tapping techniques or breath work or hypnosis hypnotherapy and other tools that we offer at us so from panic when you move away to understand as we grew over a period of time there were a lot of these instincts that we kept developing as the society formed what was happening is that uh, we started becoming more organized in terms of staying in a tribe as i just mentioned from just the nomads and moving freely as individuals when we understood that we were attacked by the saber tooth or cert certain carnivorous animals and we became their meal we had to survive uh, in a certain setup where we built that society and community around it so if the community was there the leader of the community had to be appointed who of course naturally became the alpha male or some of the most uh, uh, stronger elements of the uh, tribe and became the leader now that leader obviously had to set rules as the society formed the tribes and the modern society structure also is filled with all the rules you can't talk to your parents like that you can't talk to your boss like that you can't talk to your authorities or you have to follow a system and a rule when you're working in a society like how a primitive man just felt like doing anything urinated anywhere defecated anywhere there was no concept of a marriage or society all of this happened autonomically but today we live in a society so there are more rules and as a part of these social rules today we have more systems in place and that is why systems or rules makes us feel uncomfortable because we have the sense of lack of freedom that i'm not free or i'm not allowed to execute the choices that i want to make free so these systems and rule makers more inhibited you can't talk to certain people in a certain way even though the opposite person is entirely irrational or not making sense to you these inhibitions of do not voicing out your opinions make you feel more uh, you know trapped suffocated hence the more internalization happens these internalizations cause more panic more breakdowns at either physical level or an emotional level causing this entire disease full mind when we say dis ease the displacement of ease is what it means and that's where we come in to play mitsubishi was the first company to realize this internalization is causing all the diseases to come about so they experimented with keeping the bot uh, you know cutouts of their bosses in the basement where a person could just pick up a bat and or thrash these cutouts or yell at them to vent out all the anxiety anger or frustration that they were going through and as a part of this entire understanding they could calm down their stress levels and then produce 20 30% more work so externalization of emotions is very easy when you displace it or internalize it it causes disease and trap breakdowns however when you let it go rather than venting out maybe through breath work or certain coping mechanisms that we will be sharing in further videos can help you even through therapy to vent out that uh, anxiety anger or frustration or whatever angst that you're going and you become at ease with yourself so these therapies do help do take help do not hesitate take a 30 minute free consultation with any of our therapists and they will be able to help you understand to diagnose what the problem is and to give you the entire path to recovery